Why are all these people writing in the swell? They're writing to make a statement about the Emory County Lands Bill in Congress and to alert writers everywhere that access could be on the chopping block again. Then it's no boys allowed as we join the Nitro Gear and Axle Ladies run at Trail Hero. And Reestein is returned from his Halloween haunt in Lithuania, unscathed. He will tell us about his harrowing adventure at Witch's Hollow. Fall is in full swing. At Your Leisure is next. It's one thing when you're out motoring for fun, but when you're out motoring for a cause, man, that puts fire in your belly. Oh, yeah. I got plenty of that <laughs> yeah. on that Mexican food last night. <laughs> there you go. Hi, everybody. Whoa, I'm going to stand over here. Hi, everybody. Welcome to At Your Leisure Today. I'm Chad Booth. And I'm Rhea Rossi Booth, and we are out here in beautiful Emory County in the lovely little town of Huntington, and we're going to go out with some really great people today from around the area, and we're going to OHV out in the swell, and it's kind of like what everybody should be doing. This is true. Today. Today, it's because gorgeous. they may not be able to tomorrow. We are going to spend some time in the show talking about the Emory County Public Lands Bill, which started out as being what the OHV community thought was to be a really good, well-balanced bill. But once they saw it surface in Washington, they had a different point of view. In fact, let's find out a little bit about what they're thinking right now. Over the last 20 years, I have seen uh, lands issues in Emory County morph back and forth, pressure from the extreme environmental groups pushing it one way, the motorized community pushing the other direction and trying to get some type of a balanced bill and tell you what right now this bill that Emory County has proposed and is in Washington right now has morphed into something that I don't recognize. It may not say it's specifically closing routes but the language in the bill does not provide good enough protection for these roads and trails. It feels like every time something changes they make it more friendly to non-motorized and environmental and less friendly to motorized recreation. And so we got involved a little bit more so and tried to put some pressure on the Emory, Land, Emory County Lands Council and the commissioners to maybe uh, make some changes to the bill. And essentially we came up with four things that we would like to see happen. And uh, frankly, they didn't want to listen to us at all. Understanding that the OHV community has bought off on this bill. I can't understand why, because as long as I've been board member a long enough time to have not been invited to weigh in from our perspective, that kind of concerns me. We didn't want really any more. We wanted to be able to maintain and have access to what we had. We as a community really need to get out and voice our concerns, and we need to tell our commissioners to stop this bill bring it back to our community and let us look at it. And moving back home here to Emory County, going out on, on the Santa Fe Swell 10 minutes from my house is, is very breathtaking for me and it's very relaxing. We've been here for a long time, so this is our backyard. And without that language to protect us, who says what roads and trails can be, will be left open or be closed. You don't have to travel far from town before you realize how important and how passionate these people are because the scenery tells you, tells you everything. Oh, this is a spectacular view. We're looking down on San Rafael River and it's fall colors and it is God's country. <laughs> this is so unbelievably spiritual and inspiring. And this is the Little Grand Canyon. That's what they call it, right? Yeah, the, the, the Little Grand Canyon. We're on a part of the swell called the Wedge where the, there are two gorges that come together and meet at a point. And by the time we're done and we see you again, we will be down at the bottom here by the river. But right now it's time for us to go off to our travel adventure for this week. So today we're down in uh, San Hollow and we're on the girls, the ladies run 
first time I've been on a ladies run and I'm super excited to have other ladies to talk about their stories and uh, how they got into jeeping. It's great to have women out here showing other women that they can do it, they can hit the trail. There is, every challenge you hit, it is something new, it's a new challenge, it's empowering. You know, there's a sky's the limit. You can achieve anything, you can do anything, and to get other women out here and showing that they can tackle anything that they want to is huge. And I think it's important to have a women specific so we can all kind of feed off each other, learn from each other. You know, we all have different personalities and we're all female, which brings us all together as one unit. But we're having a great day out here on Milk Smile at Trail Heroes. Um, so we just did Milt's Mile. Um, it's a level six trail. In Utah, there's a levels one through 10. 10's hardcore buggy stuff. Six is pretty good. I mean, that was some big rocks out there today and we had a couple good challenges, a couple spots that seem scarier than they really are. And uh, we just took all of our gals through it. Everybody was smiling and having a good time cheering each other on and they rocked it. They did awesome. Uh, the Trail Hero is a phenomenal event and it supports a lot of great causes, including veterans, disabled veterans, and of course, women, the trail ride that we're on today. We actually heard about the Trail Hero event from a good friend of ours known as Jeeping Jitsi. The moment she told us about that, we decided we had to come out here and try it out. We've never been to Sand Hollow, we've never been to Huracan, Utah, and from the videos, it was super rowdy, so we wanted to come out. adrenaline is just incredible. I go up these steep little inclines and get a little tippy on one side and my heart just starts pounding and then I get to the top and I'm like, man, that was freaking awesome. It builds up confidence. Uh, a lot of, I know a lot of girls are out there and they're helping support their husbands, but the guys are generally the ones driving for whatever reason and they actually all proved today that that's, that doesn't need to be how it goes. So what we're trying to do is provide an environment um, where we support each other and all recognize that we're at different levels. We actually had a couple of girls on our trail today that haven't driven at all and they got through all those obstacles and they had a great time so that was really awesome. We don't necessarily always have to have our men with us, not that they aren't great and we value them greatly, but uh, and also being able to kind of give each other the confidence to just say, yeah, hit it and let's go and have some fun. And I think that it's important to have a separate ladies run for the camaraderie, uh, to make connections with people because we understand we go through the same kind of stereotypes. So people look at my Jeep and assume that this is my husband's Jeep, but when in fact it's mine and uh, I bought it and I wanted it and this is my hobby and I love it. Stars come out at night Oh, there ain't nothing like Being raised in the basin with a youth reservation Skin starvation That Duchesne County life Is it better to be strong or smart? Well, when you combine a class-leading 999cc engine with the industry's first and only intelligent four-wheel drive system the answer is simple. It's better to be both. The Pioneer 1000 Limited Editions, the newest members of the growing Pioneer family from Honda. Emory County has got a public land bill going on right now and 
rights to roads are in jeopardy. That's why it's so important for us to support the state and the counties in securing RS-2477 rights away. But we need you. If you were eight years old or older in 1966 and remember anything about a road, please call 801-537-9819 and arrange for them to come visit you and take your testimony. You could save access for your kids and grandkids. Crisp, colorful, a world in transition. You don't have to travel the back roads of Maine to explore autumn in all of its glory. Beaver County offers fall in unique splendor, with drives along forgotten canyons and hikes through meadows exploding with vibrant hues of red and yellow. Hit the road with your family and discover a side of Beaver County you never knew you were missing. Autumn is fleeting, so don't hesitate. Beaver County, it's time to experience the real Utah. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. I get to be on the product review side because I'm going to give you a testimonial and a product review today. I'm with Paul Schroeder from Clearly Tough, and we're going to look at windshields. Paul, tell me why the Clearly Tough windshield is different than anything else out there. Well, as a company, we've decided that we want to go only scratch resistant. We're mm -hmm. the only company that I know of that does that. Scratch resistance is what it's all about. Yeah. It's so frustrating to be on the trail and not be able to see and, through your windshield. And how many times have I heard that before? <laughs> you do hear that. Okay, but... prove it to me. Okay, so this is a windshield that we've had on this machine for a few years now, mm -hmm. and it's held up really, really well because of the hard coat that's on the, the windshield. Uh -huh. And this is a typical situation where it's rained, you get the dust particles in the rain, and that's what your windshield looks like if it's been left outside. Correct. Now what will happen is um, either somebody not thinking about it or a kid or somebody will come up and they'll rub their hand or write across their name that. In it. Yeah. Or yeah, they'll do something like that. When you do that with a windshield that does not have the hard coat on it, uh -huh. you're going to get these fine micro scratches and it's going to cover the windshield so when you're going in the sun you can't see out of that. Alright, so somebody's just going to say you just ruined that windshield by doing that. Yeah. They'll say that but Basically what we do is we keep a water bottle with us, a couple of drops of dish soap to get any grease marks out of uh -huh. there. And all you need to do, spray that like that. Grab some paper towels, no microfiber cloths or special cloths like that. Take that paper towel and just wipe it down and it will be gone. You do it, it is hard coated on both sides. So you see that there's something on the inside there too. Just spray the inside. And then you're back to new. Like I say, this has been on our machine for a couple of years now, and it blows people away when they see it. Let's talk about undestructibility, because the, the unit we had on here before we got yours cracked. Oh, yeah. And that okay. will happen. Yeah, if, if you don't have polycarbonate, you may have acrylic or some other type of plexiglass that it will break. Polycarbonate is 250 times stronger than glass. OK, once again, I say prove it. OK, well, here's a proof for that. If you're riding and you hit a branch or something really hard, yep. it will break a normal windshield. I think that proves the point, doesn't it? You want to try it on your machine? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, he could have been holding the punch. That's amazing. Look at that. And it doesn't even leave a mark other than my fingerprints. <laughs> okay, how many different kinds of windshields do you make? You make front and back. Uh, we make front and back. We focus on the front because the rears of these machines are so varied that it's really hard to get um, every one of those fit. But as far as front windshields, that's our forte, especially the folding because we like the versatility. Okay, very good. How do they find out about Clearly Tough? Clearly Tough, you can go to clearlytough.com or you can call 800-393-5913 and we'll give you the information you need. All right, Paul, thank you so much for the product review. I will give you a testimonial before we go. They work. We've had them on our machines for a couple of years. They're a great product, and we'll see you on the trail. We'll be right back with more of At Your Leisure. When we come back, it'll be our Trailhead Adventure. new Yamaha Wolverine X2. Purpose built for exploring tight technical terrain. 
and boasting next-level versatility. No other side-by-side -side delivers this level of proven off-road performance. The all-new Wolverine X2 from Yamaha. Get your new Yamaha at Stedman's Recreation. Ride hard, play hard. For seven years, Utah's Community Voice has been the county seat, a program that looks beyond politics to spotlight the issues and stories that really matter to you and your community. Now you can help set Utah's agenda for the future by joining the conversation. Become a county seat sponsor and help support those conversations that are critical to the future of state government. Contact us at 801-947-8888 to make your contribution to help the voice of Utah be heard like never before. It's time for the Polaris Holiday Sales Event. Get huge holiday deals on the world's best-selling off-road lineup. Chase adventure on a legendary sportsman. Get more done with a hard-working ranger. Or attack the off-road with a high-performance razor. Celebrate the season with rebates up to $2,000 during the Polaris Holiday Sales Event. Conquer the summit and catch that ski doo feeling with the 2019 Ski Doo Mountain Sleds. That's not Bigfoot, although it did have big feet. Yeah, it, it looks kind of bird like. Indeed. Yeah. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We are out in the Buckhorn Draw, part of the San Rafael Swell, and this is an area of concern to a lot of the local citizens of Emory County because of the public land bill. They are worried that some of their access will be cut off which is kind of a sad thing given all the history. Oh, it, it would just be a shame if they cut off any access up here. This is fabulous. And you got these beautiful little kids running around here with their families. I mean, it's just, it just has to always stay open forever and ever. It's too yeah. beautiful. Now, it's known that dinosaurs tracked this area because there's a quarry not too far from here uh, where they've been digging up bones. But every now and then you'll run across a spot like this right along the side of the trail where some kind of Diplo, Daco, Bronto, Allosaur type thing walked around. I'm not sure what you think it was a man eater. Oh, it could be. He looks like it could have been a carnivore. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Neanderthals look out. <laughs> anyway, we do want to find out a little bit more about the history here because this is an area rich in it. So let's check it out. Matt Warner was part of Butch Cassidy's gang, and they <coughs> hung out down in this territory. Uh, and this was probably their major route to get through the robber's roost. He also talks about how unprofitable robbing banks and robbing things was. He did a lot better when he finished up his jail sentence and ran for sheriff of Carbon County. He ran with Butch Cassidy. In fact, he said that he's the one that named Butch Butch. show you this, we picked it up just, just in this little gully here. Uh, this was a part of the ocean 180 million years ago. And so you'll see the imprints of sea animals. Then about 130 million years ago, the dinosaurs came into this area. And so there's a lot of fossilized dinosaur bones. And then, what, maybe 8,000 years ago to, to 2,000 years ago, the Fremont Indians came in and a lot of this artwork is from them. Gold's a pretty temporary deal. This history should last us forever. But it's, it's, it's important, I think, to have it here and be able to access it and share it, share it, share in it. You can come out on some of these trails and look off into these canyons, and it's, it's really a great experience. Wow, Chad, I had no idea how this place is like gushing with history. <laughs> it's really amazing. Well, you know, from from uh, wild and crazy dinosaurs through outlaw bandits to even some of the current ranching, there's an awful lot to learn around this place. What do you no, think? Well, no, it, it, honestly, it's, it's amazing. And the, the beauty is just uh, astounding. Uh, honestly, it, it's amazing out here. It's hard to describe, it's so beautiful. I've decided I'm actually gonna leave my helmet on because it's gonna to be too hard to get off. Yeah, and I got helmet hair, so. 
<laughs> so we'll kind of get ourselves all cleaned up here and uh, we're going to take off right now to our trailhead adventure. I'm Reese Stein at your leisure and just in time for Halloween, a trip to maybe the spookiest place in the world, the Hill of Witches. Why the witch is here? Because uh, on that special night, when the longest, when the shortest night and the longest day, the witches appear according to our, you know, religion uh, when we were pagans. Hidden on a sandy hill on a remote spit of land near the Baltic Sea in Lithuania, sculptures intricately carved from native oak haunt this foreboding forest. In ancient times, it is said that on the shortest night of the longest day, the hell which is gathered here to celebrate the festival of St. John. This witch had maybe a little too much celebration. We gingerly give the potion which flipped this witch a sip. If nothing else, the mystery elixir warms our core on a chilly fall morning. The witches, you know, try uh, to various tricks here. There's witches there because a long time ago, when they were under Soviet occupation, the Lithuanians who were very creative were being stymied, and so they wanted to do something creative. And so they made all of these wonderful statues and put them on this sand dune hill. And it would be the perfect place to be on a windy day. <laughs> the item that caught me the most was the gate to the devil. And the devil was standing right behind the gate. It seemed like it was getting ready for Halloween. The wooden carvings just stood out because there were so many exciting features about them. Some of them were violent looking. Some of them were folklore tales, which also can be very violent. I loved it because it gave us that opportunity to get to know each of the characters and the myths and the legends behind it. I loved it. Well, kind of spooky, kind of eerie with all the trees and everything, but the wood carvings were fantastic. I was just amazed at the, the intricacies and uh, each one you could see the feelings on their face and uh, it, was, it was really cool. Yeah. It was a nice walk through the woods too. <laughs> I felt like I was in Lord of the Rings. It was uh, quite an old forest, and it was dark, and it was rainy, and I loved the statues that uh, were indicative of all the different myths that existed, and I found it quite wonderful, and I thought the statues were beautifully carved. There remains an aura here that in 1979 inspired artists from throughout Lithuania to begin carving these sculptures and placing them along an undulating trail. Year after year they returned to create a solid legacy of more than 80 carvings. The beautiful giantess Naringa greets visitors at the trailhead. Legend says that when she rebuffed the advances of the evil dragon Noglas, he threatened disaster. Narenda created this barrier spit to protect the locals. Today, the spit contains the largest sifting sand dunes in Europe. Ellen Nuta, with her hair all done up, patiently awaits the return of her fisherman husband, Custis. Fishing was the way of life in the olden days. Here, the devil is in a life and death card game with an old hag, and flames engulf this condemned witch. Her face reflects resigned agony. The trail itself is a delightful path winding through stands of mostly scotch pines planted to restore the forest after centuries of timber cutting. The hill draws families with youngsters on days when the witches sleep. On a crest of the hill, Devil's Gate with evil incarnate lurking in the background. Uh, we find safety in numbers. Some of the carvings are just for fun, while others stimulate emotions other than fear. Stein at your leisure on the Hill of Witches in Lithuania. The Utah Farm Bureau began as a collection of farmers supporting each other to raise the food we enjoy. Today, Farm Bureau membership encompasses everyone, whether ranchers, growers, or just everyday folks like you and me. Members enjoy discounts on items like vehicles and ATVs or insurance that's very affordable. You don't have to be a farmer to join and dues are small, but together we make a big difference in keeping our food supply local and abundant. Join Utah Farm Bureau.
You have a message. You have a brand. You have something worth experiencing. What you don't have is an audience. It's time to change that. It's time to partner up with the number one outdoor program in the country and show the world what you have to offer. Advertising on At Your Leisure is effective and affordable, giving you an audience that dwarfs anything else out there. Backed by a proven force of outdoor adventure. Contact the AYL team at 801-947-8888. It's time your message was heard. From the trail to the heart of the backcountry, discover that Ski-Doo feeling with the 2019 Ski-Doo Trail and Crossover Sleds. Welcome back to your Leisure, everybody. We're standing in Buckhorn Draw, which is a gorgeous canyon out here. And we're in front of the big picture petroglyphs. And these guys really are big. Yeah, and big. A little, a little scary. Yeah. To see the one with the wings, it looks like the angel of death. Uh, yeah, kind of. And it's got next You're to somebody with horns. You're scaring the children, honey. Okay. Well, you know, it's okay. <laughs> It's this is this is part of the Fremont Indian culture, which is here for a few thousand years. And I, I might quite frankly point out, never once did closing roads become an issue to those people. Never once. Never once. Well, do you know what those things say? Do you know what it says? No, but I think it's good news. It is. It's actually, if you look right there, it says, somebody is about to win in the AYL sticker contest. And I know who it is. I found him today. Check this out. This dude is a diehard. Is are you his lovely wife? I am. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, this this woman is married to this guy who is a who's just a been. Oh, fan, you know for what? Sure. We love you. Thank you for watching our show, and you guys are the new winners. Oh, great! Congratulations, you have won an overnight stay at the one and only Daniel Summit Lodge, jam-packed with winter or summer adventure. It's a beautiful place with outdoor fun at your doorstep, literally. And what a fun week we'll have next week as the caravan comes on by, and we're gonna show you a look at next week's show. Next week, we will dig into adventure close to home as we seek the biggest off-road vehicles in the world at the Rio Tinto Kennecott Copper Mine. Then, it's off to the desert to discover new riding opportunities for off-road at Lake Powell. Yes, you heard right. We will have the exciting details. And Reese Stein stops to enjoy that perfect window of fall splendor that only outdoors in Utah can provide. Looks like next week's show is going to be a great one. We appreciate your tuning in to join us. One important thing, make sure, make sure that you take the time to let Congressman Bishop and our two uh, state senators, Senator Lee and Senator Hatch, know how you feel about this area down here and the Emory County Lands Bill. We've got to get some changes made in it to make sure that we protect access for everybody that wants to come out and enjoy the swell. Touche. And we want to thank the uh, Castle Country OHV Club, that's what all these shirts are around here, for their support and coming out with us today to give us this great tour. It was awesome. That, that, it's true. It really was. What a great trip. Thanks, guys. So how's we end every show? There's adventure around every bend. It's just up to you to get out and create your own adventure. At, at your leisure. All right, there we go. <laughs> oh, I love you. I'm out of gas, by the way. <laughs> <laughs>